about being. So um, this is something I've really dove into recently and like refocused on because I feel like it's something that is neglected um, and it's such like an important part of what we do. Um, also, I just want to apologize ahead of time. It is witching hour in the alley. And so if you hear screaming and all that, there's a lot of kid action happening in fireworks. So that's, that's where we're at today. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, so being. Um, we are human beings. We are not human doings. And I think that that is so important to remember. And Tiff talked about this on the call this morning on the Mission Possible call. Um, actually, I was texting her. I was like, we're talking about some of the same things. So that was cool to um, kind of hear that. But anyway, we're human beings, not human doings. And so I really want to dive into the being part of the be, do, have, because it's a three-part thing. And yes, we do do things, but our value and our worth isn't based on what we do. It is innately based on who we are. And that is so important for when we own that, because that transfers into our confidence and that's how we attract people. So We've seen this so many times and I think it's so important um, in terms of what we do um, in order to have the things that we want, we have to um, be and do those things. So um, we have to be the person that we want to, that we need to be and do the things that we need to do in order to have the things that we want, saying it backwards. Um, but I really want to focus on the be because I think we talk a lot about the do, which is great. That's so important. Um, but even before the doing, we really have to get into the being space. So I saw this quote and I just thought it was perfect in terms of we're human beings and we're not human doings. And it's called self-worth. The only one who gets to decide your worth is you. It doesn't come from your bank account or the number of friends you have. It doesn't come from what someone else says you are worth. It's called self-worth for a reason. It comes from you. It comes from being yourself and being proud of who you are. It comes from being someone that you can count on and someone you love. The numbers will change with time, but what won't change is who you are deep inside. Beautiful, limitless, wonderful, creative, strong, capable. And that is where your worth comes from. And so we all have own adjectives that we associate with, but it is so important to be aware of that and we're in such a doing society where so much value is placed on how much we do even as children and really when even though we talk about like you're special and you're good enough and whatever you're good enough just as you are we don't reward that we reward the doing and so it's important to step back and be in this space of being and be confident in that so you can come into the doing with the right energy. So today's gonna be like a lot of self-reflection. So I hope you brought a pen and paper. And if you didn't, we'll, I'll send this to Rick so he can send it out. Um, we're gonna go through these kind of quickly. I'm um, gonna give you a little time to write on the ones that stick out to you the most so we can talk about them at the end. Um, but these are really worth sitting down and journaling through. Um, and we're gonna talk about the clarity piece also in a minute. Um, but what kind of person do you want to be? Like who, who do you want to be um, if you're like finding that things aren't aligning in your life? How do you want to feel each day? What kind of energy do you want to feel? Do you want to feel excited? Do you want to feel empowered? Do you want to feel strong? Um, do you want to feel confident? What energy do you want to feel in that space? How do you want to feel in your business when you're working it, right? This is supposed to be fun. This is supposed to be exciting. And yeah, some days it's not always the fun, like it's not always fun, but um, when you come in with the energy of being excited about what you're doing, even if it's maybe not your favorite piece of it, it changes the whole dynamic. Um, and for these things to happen, like what do you need to do to make that happen? What do you need to do to get in a positive energy space for yourself? What do you need to do to make your business feel the best when you're working in it? Um, what's already working in your business right now or in your life? What's missing? Um, for example, one of the things that I really value uh, for our team is having fun and making sure that that's a key part of what we do. And since most of my team is spread out and not local, um, we're doing more, I mean, we're already doing 
stuff on Zoom. So that was nice for the transition. But um, when we get together, we love to dance. And so now at the beginning of every call, we do a dance party. And so it just brings the energy up for the team. And that's the energy that I want to have in my team. And that's the energy of the people that I want to attract into my team. And so if we're not having fun and doing the things we love, then then like people aren't gonna stick around, right? And you're not gonna wanna stick around. So going through these questions, like jot down something for a few of them, like what do you want to feel? And how do you wanna be in your business? Um, do you wanna be excited? Do you wanna be happy? Do you wanna be whatever that looks like for you? Um, it looks like something different for everybody, right? And can I move to the next picture? Everyone have enough time with the questions? Go ahead, Jen. Okay. There's more questions. So a lot of self-reflection today. Um, and then also really reflecting on what you value. So what do you value um, in your life, in your customers, in your business? Like what things are important to you? Um, we're going to do a thing and a little activity here in a minute about writing out your ideal customer. But we were doing this in our team. And... Um, a few of the people were talking about how it's so important that their customers are passionate about the earth and like Earth Day and all of those things. And some people that wasn't a huge priority on their list, but other people are like, those are the people I want to connect with. Those are the people I want to work with because that aligns for them. And so what kind of things do you value? Um, I value independence. <laughs> so I want people that are able to place orders online and like let me teach them but like also have them understand how to do it and not need me to bring things over or them wanting to pick things up from my house like i want people that value the direct shipment option and all of those things so what things do you value i also value kindness i want to work with kind people um across the board and so going through that what's important to you um, how do your values currently align with what you're doing or are they not aligning? So when you look at how you're building your business, how you're living your life, are your values actually playing out in that? Um, and, and what needs to change to improve that or flip that or what's going well that's already supporting that? Um, what needs to change to strengthen that alignment? So even if it's going well, what could you do? differently to e to make it better. So, jot a few things on here too. And then going, so you're finding out who you want to be, right? To have the things that you want. Um, but also, who do you want to work with? Who do you want to connect with? Um, some people want to work with anybody and everybody. I know that I do not, and that's one of the benefits of this business. I want to work with certain people, um, both as customers. I have a very specific customer that I want to work with, and I have a very specific business partner that I want to work with. And while some traits overlap, some things are very different. Um, so who is your ideal customer? What do they look like? What do they value? What gets them excited? Um, what does your ideal business partner look like? Who do you want to work with um, on a regular basis? Who do you want to bring into your team? Whose energy do you want to bring into your team? Because that matters. What does your team look like? What does it feel like to work with your team? What energy is there? What is happening in that space for you all? What makes your team special? Do you have dance parties? Do you love to celebrate with champagne? I love that about this team. Um, <laughs> You know, what makes, what makes your team special? What sets you apart? And what do you want that to look like? And maybe you don't have a team yet and that's okay. But putting it out there and getting it down and being clear on that makes such a difference. Um, so I love this quote from Tiff today on the webinar. She said, I used to be clever and never made a lot of money. Now that I'm clear, I make a lot of money. And she was talking about it in terms of communication, but I think it absolutely applies to this. And in our follow-up conversation, I feel like that would fit. Yes, it does. Um, but you have to be clear on what you want if you're going to attract it into your life and if it's going to be in your realm, right? So I haven't been very clear on what I wanted everything to look like for a while. And I've really been intentional about this this last few months. And 
even with all this crazy going on um, and doing things online, which is like kind of nice sometimes, but like also as an introvert, I didn't understand how that would like translate into meeting people because there's like all these people talking and just a lot going on. Like, I don't know, there was just a lot to me. And I was like, I don't know how this is gonna go. And I have met so many amazing women and whether we partner or not, they're connected to networks of other really amazing people. I can just tell based on who they are. And so just putting myself in the energy space and the mindset space and getting clear on exactly who I wanna bring into my life, like those people have been coming up out of nowhere. Um, and it's been really exciting to see. And so having clarity is so important in, in everything, but especially at this beginning step, because if you skip it and you go straight to the doing, you're going to miss a lot and you're just going to be scrambling at everything. And then either you'll get a lot of nothing or you'll get something you really don't want. And that is not fun. Um, and I love this quote. You all know I love Brendan Burchard. Um, perhaps the world isn't giving you what you want because based on all of your distractions and lack of discipline, it's simply unclear what you're asking for. And I think that's so true. And I don't even know, I think discipline is part of it, but I think if you're not like, if you're not putting out into the world what you want and you're not clear about it, like how can it come back into your life? Like how can it come in there if you're not looking for that? Or if you're not looking for one thing, you're looking for everything. And so like Tiff said, clarity is so, so powerful and it's so powerful with this B step. And like I said, we, I feel like we jump over this and we skim it a lot. Um, and I know for me, I didn't pay much attention to it until recently. And since paying more attention to it, I felt a shift in myself. Um, and I've definitely felt a shift in the people and the quality of people that are coming into my life in terms of who I want to work with versus who I happen to work with because they're there. Um, and then finally, um, what do you need to do each day to get into your optimal energy state? And so Tiff also talked about this on the call too, talking about, you know, we want to show up and be our best for others. And so that means we have to take care of ourselves first. And there's so much noise out there, even more now with everything going on, um, that has so many opinions and not a lot of it's positive. And so it's your responsibility to do what you need to do for yourself, whether that's reading, whether that's yoga, whether that's running, whether that's your stripping your shake, whether that's dancing it out before you have to get on a call um, or make phone calls, whatever it is that gets you into the energy state that you need to be, like do it. Yeah, we don't always want to work, right? I know I don't always want to work. I'm there. I, like, I love what I do, but I also like enjoying breaks. Um, but sometimes like, okay, I'm going to do it. And so you know, whether it's jumping around or putting on a song that really gets me excited, doing something to get me into an energy state that is positive and excited so that when I engage with people, even if it's only for a short period of time, like the energy that I'm putting out can make space to bring in that much more energy back in. So I think this is so important. And I think um, we get caught up in the doing and I feel like that is important too. And when you're in this energy state, it gets you into a place to naturally want to do more because you're excited and you're happy and the things that are coming to you are what you want. And so really focusing on this brings all the other pieces together, but we can't skip this step um, even though sometimes we want to, or we do. Cause I, I know I did for a really long time and um, sitting back into that has really made a difference. So 